new day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to thank God for Hallelujah. giving us an opportunity to be here. We bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. One of my uh, uh, next prayers is to go back to our in-service in service, in person service, hallelujah. We are working towards that goal. <clears throat> As at the same time, we continue to uh, uh, bring in you life services during the week. As we'll continue to do that, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. But God is good, so I bring you greetings in the name of the Lord. Shalom to you. May the grace of the Lord and the power of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. I bring amen. greetings to you. May the peace that personal understanding be your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Grace and peace Amen. to you, church family, friends, from wherever you're watching me, whatever part of the world that you're uh, uh, with me this morning on this great morning, new day. Hallelujah. I pray that you will be uh, exponentially blessed in the name of the Lord. This morning, without wasting time in the next 40 minutes or 45 minutes or so, I am going to be speaking second part of Surviving Hard Times. Last Sunday, I started out the introduction, spoke quite at length about uh, how uh, 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 Christians should behave during economic hard times. I pretty much give a little bit surface to that introduction because uh, it's quite a very loaded. I have a lot of information that I wanted to share. Hallelujah. Consigning that this very topic, surviving hard times. You know, the Bible says when rain falls, it fall both on the just and the on the unjust. We all shop, we all buy, we all tread. Hallelujah. Both from the same store. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We all go for our, whatever it's your daily or things that you purchase. We shop at the same place. Praise the Lord. There are no uh, 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 grocery stores or shopping malls strictly only for uh, believers. Amen. So we live in the same universe, we're impacted by the same economic policies, the same uh, strange times, amen, these are strange times. And the Bible says we should redeem the time for the days are evil. Amen. amen. Redeem the times amen. for the days are evil. Praise the Lord. But we serve a God, amen, who amen. is also careful and also caring and also merciful and also knows our afflictions he knows our pain amen god also knows the difficult situations and circumstances that we are going through but i want to encourage you this morning there's something god dropped in my spirit this morning while i was preparing for this service this morning and i said i'm not going to uh, end this service this morning without sharing this very important information and it's going to help you as it has helped me over the years after hallelujah praise the lord i became a man of god i began to search god amen praise the lord and and god began to i begin to be filled and being led by the holy spirit consigning these things i'm about to share with you hallelujah and what that is before i move uh, <clears throat> a little forward i'm going to give five keys uh, keys as to ways to attract favor in difficult times. You know, understand that there's one thing is to have economic upheavals, to have uh, 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 hard times when a hard time hits, economic difficulties, what we call inflation. Praise the Lord, hard times. Amen. It, it's one thing to have hard time, and it's also another thing to have favor to get through it. Hallelujah. Amen. To have favor of God, to have hallelujah grace of God to get through it. Early before the January this year, the Lord told me that this year we will see His goodness. We will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. But there are conditions to see God's goodness, to continue to enjoy and bask in the goodness of the Lord. Amen. So just as hard times hit, amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. God has also given us ways of escape, ways to endure, ways to thrive, even difficult times. You know, one thing people are used to is to... Uh, uh, so people often feel that they, uh, God is only God uh, when the economy is buoyant, when things are so well, it going so well, people oftentimes remember God. Mm. But when things are hard, people oftentimes wonder, where is God? Praise the Lord. Yes. But there are no, never more better time to draw even closer to God when there are uncertainties. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord. So, whether economic difficulties, inflation, or hard times, they are real. These are real facts. 
They are not of recent development or a recent phenomenon. From the Old Testament days, people have fallen on hard times. People have fallen on difficult times, compelled by economic uncertainties. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Crops fell to yielded produce, pests, and, and pests going into, into farms and devastate produce. Praise the Lord. Amen. Drought. Amen. 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 Hidden the land. Amen? Amen. Due to military conflict. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Due to military conflict. Due to military conflict. Hallelujah. Amen. Various reasons Amen. could lead to economic hard times. Bad policies from leadership. Mm -hmm. Corrupt leaders. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But above all these situations, upheavals, economic upheavals, political uh, issues, that may bring economic hardship. What about when family member, the male breadwinner is sick uh -huh. or is missing, lost, dead? That could also bring economic hardship. People lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. Amen? Business collapse. Amen? Financial investment. I heard somebody who jumped in, recently invested so much money in the cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm didn't know it was one of those Ponzi oh, stuff geez. and oh. lost almost everything she had. Mm -hmm. Have to start from scratch. That can lead to depression. Yes. But hallelujah. Above all these things, God takes delight when we prosper. In fact, he rejoices in us when we do well. I believe there is more in stock for this generation. There's more blessings untapped yet to unfold. Amen. We must look forward to better days ahead. Amen. We must look forward to the plans of God. Hallelujah. We must search. Hallelujah. God, even in the midst of the lack and the midst of the difficulties. From Genesis to Revelation, we read so many powerful stories about men of God, women of God, nations who of God who passed through difficult times. But how did they get through it? How did they get through it? Amen. The glory of God has not stopped shining Amen. upon his people. We must rise and shine for the glory of God has come. Amen. 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 God's Amen. plan is still unfolding. Look at what we have achieved globally in the past 10 years. Look at how far we have come. It was just a few years ago. We, we are using tokens to make phone calls, public phone calls. It was just a few years ago. Amen. Look how far we have come. Praise the Lord. Bible says all things work together yes. for the good of those who are called according to his purpose. As we speak, they speak of economic uncertainties. We still have people who are launching new cars, new homes. People who are celebrating their first millions. People who are moving from millionaires to billionaires. As the economy is hard, as globally inflation is hitting hard, there are still individuals who are celebrating successes. Amen. People whose Amen. ways of life have not shifted, have not moved. Amen. Amen. When before the inflation hit in time of Joseph, before the inflation hit the drought, the hard time hit the nation of Egypt, God has revealed it to Joseph. And Joseph was able to do something about it. Yes. So we can Bible says in Amos 3 7, God does not do a thing unless he first reveal it to his prophets. Amen. So this Amen. time we live, God has already revealed it. <laughs> That's why in Genesis, in January, he says to us, We will see his goodness. In Amen. spite of Listen, when, in spite of the rough times, the difficult times and the uh, uh, uncertainties that prevailing in the air, prevailing in the air, God's goodness still roam around the earth. Amen. After God spoke, when God met, met Moses, what did he say? God is good. He's abundant in his mercy. Right? God is good. And his mercy is enduring forever. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 8, 17, 21. Proverbs. If you remember this verse. Proverbs chapter 8, 17, 21. I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently will find me. Riches and honor are with me, enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yes, than fine gold. And my revenue, right, than choice silver. I traverse the ways of righteousness, right? I traverse the ways of righteousness in the midst of part of justice that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth. That I may fill their treasures. That he may fill their treasures. Amen. Hard time lasts, they say. Right? 
Amen. He said, hard time does last, but tough people. Hard time does not last, mm. but tough people do. Amen. Right? Hard time does not last, but tough people do. That's what we learned last week, right? Part of the way. I've heard it used many times. Hard time does not last, but tough people do. We will last longer than hard time. You will outlive your hard, difficult time. You will outlive your financial hardship. Praise the Lord. You know, fan, difficult time is synonymous to human uh, civilization because the necessity that create need, uh, a need that create uh, necessity that create need. need. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 It's when there's a need that creates invention. If people have need, then you have to create something because there's a need for it. Market, there's always market for something, right? Praise the Lord. If you are, your skills is to satisfy the need, then you are an inventor. Praise the Lord. But the word I was trying to get into before I give quickly these five basic steps, five basic keys to surviving hard time and obtaining favor in difficult times. You know it already, but you probably have not reflected on it as much and dwell on it as much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And take it seriously. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Psalm 33, 18. Amen. Oh, no, no, that's not what I want to do. Yes. Psalm 33, 8, 19. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. Right? Deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Amen. Famine, whether in crops. Famine, whether in loss of stocks, in economic downturn. What we call inflation. Praise the Lord. God is still above. Amen. Greater. Amen. Amen. Than this hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He says, the eye of the Lord. He says, hallelujah. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him. Right? Upon them that hope in his mercy. To deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Hallelujah. Old Testament time, they didn't call it famine. They didn't call it famine. They didn't call it inflation. Oh, I'm sorry, Old Testament time, they didn't call it in the old ancient time. Economic hardship, they didn't call it inflation. They call it what? Famine. They call it famine. But the modern economic term refer to it as inflation. More money, buying less produce. Right? Yes. More money, more cash, buying less produce. Amen. 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 That's inflation. Amen. Praise the Lord. Bible also said to us, Psalm 34 of us ten. The young lion do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Amen. Psalm 34 Amen. verse 10. Alright? Amen. My brothers and friends, this morning I declare the supernatural favor of God over you, whatever is your situation. Remember what the Bible says. The Lord God, he that giveth seed to the sower, come on, and the bread to the eater, shall supply all your need. Amen. And riches Amen. through Amen. Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now here we come, this word that I've been waiting and wanted to share with you. It's called, depending upon God economy, as opposed to man's economy or world economy. You know, there's a difference between God's economy, praise the Lord, Amen. and man's economy. In, in my book that, that I have written, launched in December, called Pennywise Pound Foolish. It's a book is on Amazon and Banks and Novels. So I think it's 12, 13, 12 dollars, 12.99. Pick it up. Look at it. It came up right now. Thank you, Jesus, on the screen. Pennywise, Amen. powerful God is good. Hallelujah. Pennywise, powerful, foolish. I was just speaking about it, pop up on the screen. Hallelujah. God is awesome. You know, it, 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 the divine principles God is teaching us, even in the hard times, is to, you know, we adjust. We turn to God. We listen to what God is saying. We we adjust. Amen. Amen. To, I try to, in, to hear what is God saying, even in this, in, in, the, in the hard times. Amen? Amen. But the word I was trying to impact to speak to you about this morning is what? Hallelujah. Is what? Trusting and believing in God's economy as opposed to man's economy. Amen. They are two different. Amen. 
two different postures. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. When you believe in God's economy, in God's economy, two plus two is not always four. God economy, we believe in geometrical progression. A man economy is arithmetical progression. Amen. A man's economy, praise the Lord, you have to be qualified. But in God's economy, you might not even be qualified. Praise the Lord. Amen. God give you a job that you do not even qualify for. Praise the Lord. Have you not heard it? Have you not read it before? The testimony of people who got blessed in such a unique way, blessings that didn't make sense. Have you not heard of promotion that never made sense? People won cases, victory in cases that, that they didn't even know how it happened. But the Lord acquitted and dismissed. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's God's economy. Like I said, God's economy is not always two plus two. Things can move in what? Geometrical progression. That's quadruple. Amen. Limping. When you say the economy is limping, praise the Lord, what does that mean? We are experiencing an economic growth. That means excessive bumper harvest. Amen. When they Amen. say the economy is staggering in economics, what does that mean? Shaky, which means there is inflation predicted ahead. Staggering. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. But the Bible says, they that trust the Lord shall be what like man Zion that shall not be moved. So we don't panic. And fear and fret under inflation or difficult times. We, these are the times we put our faith into action and trust God. These are times we begin to look into the skills and the talent that we have. We have a sister in our ministry, I remember, many years ago. She was working in a small store. But I know that there's a skill God has given to her through her fingers because she's a great professional hairstylist. But for some reason, you know, she wanted to change her career. And I ministered to her, and the Lord pressed it upon my heart. And tell her that the source of her livelihood, her future money, wealth, investment, is in her palms. I called her one day, I put oil on her hands. I said, the Lord said, I should tell you, I'm just delivering a message. That store where you are, that business place where you are working for minimum wage an hour, will not provide and sustain you and your family. I said, you see your palms. Bible says, teach me, the Lord God. We believe in God who teaches our hands to work and our fingers to do battle. Amen. The same God who, uh, through Moses, told the children of Israel in Deuteronomy 8.18, he says, remember the Lord thy God. Remember what, you know what Deuteronomy Moses was telling them? When you settle in and prosper, he says, remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that gives you power to make wealth. Amen. Amen. Lord, bless the work of my hands. That's past, another scripture, right? We ask God to bless the work of our hands. Amen. Praise the Lord. I bless the sister. I put oil on her hand. I even offered to do her business cards free. Just to show her how it is so present on my spirit to encourage her. I offered her. I said, listen, give me the name of your business. I will design a business card. I, I, I'm not, I will pay for it. I will get somebody who do our card, to our, our, our contractor to design a business card with logo for you waited for you. We motivated her. She went out and said, now she's booked almost through her summer. We're not even in summer yet. But she's already booked. Now she's paid in ways. Amen. Her financial needs are being met. Amen. She's independent. She doesn't have to depend on anybody. She's now a lady who's so booked right now. The Lord has blessed her. What does that mean? It's listening to the voice of God and investing Amen. her time properly. So we, people, God is also God of the valley. He's a God of the mountain. Amen. He's God of the good time. Also, God, when things are not so favorable. Amen. God is not conditioned to only economic good times. God is conditioned to all seasons. He's God of all seasons. The Bible referred to him as a Jehovah Jireh, our mighty provider. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to learn to understand the difference between God's economy and what? And man's economy. Amen. When you operate under God's economy, goodness and mercy will follow you. Favor will follow you. You will float in abundance of God's favor. People will go out their way to bless you because you are operating under God's economy. If you have not gotten that book, please pick up that book. Whether that's a penny wise pamphlish. Order it and read it. You see, Information is very important. What you don't know is bigger than you. Amen. If you get information that will bless you and increase you, hallelujah, you will grow. Praise the Lord. Information is very important. And information is very expensive. Penny wise pamphlets. 
It's on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. There's another verse, Amen. another scripture the Lord also pressed on my mind this morning. He says what? The cattle. He says, was that, is that, uh, uh, let me look for that verse. Let me get that verse. Huh? Amen. The Amen. Lord God will serve. Amen. Amen. God is saying to us this morning, you should not worry, be confident in him. Amen. Trust him, even in this difficult time. Amen. 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 He is God that owns the, 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 the cattle on a thousand hills. Amen. He is Amen. the Lord God that owns the cattle, on a, cattle hills. on a thousand hills. Amen. The cattle on a thousand hills. Praise the Lord. Amen. So now, here is number one key factor because of time. Here's the one key factor. You need to be encouraged. You need to be motivated. You need to be strengthened. You need to know the right way to go, even in difficult times. Number one, don't rush to start up a business. Don't what? Rush, rush to start up a business in a hard times. Don't rush. Don't be too quick to move career, to shift, unless God has spoken to you concerning it. Simply, simply, simply speaking, Amen. It is always a common trend for people to want to jump. Amen. It is a common trend. I've noticed that a lot. In, in my former job uh, as a supervisor, uh, director in training, Amen. I, I, we did a leadership training. And we studied the reasons why the top seven most thriving companies, why they collapsed. Because many of them couldn't keep up. In a hard time, they tried to mimic what was in vogue. So, in in times like this, you'd be surprised. People are living careers that will sustain them in the during difficult times. They're moving to something else. Hallelujah. Amen. Because that is what is in in vogue. That's why everybody's doing now. People are quitting their job and starting their own company. Amen. People are quitting their careers and shifting to a new thing, but without first of all. Doing a proper homework. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. God is good. All the time. All the time. Hallelujah. God, God is, is good. good. Amen. Amen. So Amen. number one key factor. Don't. It says do not rush to start off a business. Or to shift or move to a new career so quickly. Because it's prestigious now. Amen. Because it is what Amen. everybody's doing now. Everybody's into fashion design. Everybody's into modeling. Everybody's into uh, what you call it, makeup artists. Everybody's into s uh, singing now. Everybody's into uh, skits in the videos. You, you remember what is going on now, right? And I've heard some people. I've seen some people I know. Many of them have moved into short videos just to make for some make quick money. But Amen. how? What will Amen. sustain you when that river dries? When that area is saturated bible says in ecclesiastes, ecclesiastes i've seen something new under the sun amen it says for the race mm. is not to the swift right it's not for the, those who are too far you gotta learn that for the race is not to the swift amen. nor is the battle to the strong amen but time and chance mm. yes time it says and there's chance. something new under the sun for amen. the race is not to the swift hallelujah hallelujah make effective use of your time hallelujah. not jumping because it's what is involved. I remember a couple of years ago, it was real estate. I had a guy met me, come jump into this thing right now, jump into this thing right now. Before Fannie Mae and Freddie. Yeah. <laughs> People don't even want to hear that word. <laughs> People fall victim. That's number one, in hard times. Number two key point you want to remember, this time, amen. Move promptly only when God says you should move. Right? Amen. Move what? Mm -hmm. Promptly. Mm -hmm. As the children of God, remember, we do not operate like the word. We listen to the words, voice of God. Romans chapter 12, 2 says, well, we should not be confounded to the things of this world. Amen. Do not be whole bound Amen. to the things of this world. In all your ways, be what? Let your mind be renewed by the power of the Spirit so that you know what is acceptable. Perfect Amen. will of God. Romans Amen. 12, 2. How will you know the perfect will of God? Even in the hard times, God is still speaking. Amen. But if we don't listen, we don't we don't pay attention. We get caught up with jumping from one job to the other, one career, because everybody's your friends are teachers now in teaching career. You want to go into oh, it's now teaching. That's what is involved now. Because everybody's in the nursing, it's the medical field now. You want to move into the medical field. Before you move, you gotta what? You gotta first wait. 
and seek him. Amen. 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 And if God is the one prompting you to move, you got to move. Amen. 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 Like fear, scarce resources, and lack, lack of, uh, lack of uh, connections can also bring problems. Do, like fear. Remember during the times of hardship, fear often aroused because, you know, uncertainty. Praise the Lord. Amen. God says, move, move. The story of Elijah come to my mind right here. Elijah was where? Elijah was under juniper tree and then he was being fed. After a while from after juniper tree, he moved to where he was being fed by raven. And after that water, the brooks dried up where he was drinking and being fed. The time there was has expired. The Lord came to Elijah and told him, it's time to move. It's time to move to what? Zarephath. Right? The Lord spoke to Elijah. If Elijah insists on staying there, praying for God's will to be done, where God has already told him to move. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then that would be a problem. Mm. So you move only when God says you should move. Bible says the step of the righteous is ordered by the Lord. I've heard testimonies even in this time. People who are making, you know, hallelujah, who are announcing, giving testimony for breakthrough, buying houses, even during this difficult time, even during inflation time, people are buying new homes, moving new homes, moving to new cities. But only when God has given the go-ahead. Amen. And I must also say this. Amen. Do not initiate to relocate. Unless God has given you the final words. Amen. 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 You know, our first action as humans is to run away from trouble. Because mm. everybody want to run we want to run away from trouble. You know, in an African proverb, they said, when... The insects see, you know, the little ants, when they see others running, they don't ask questions. They start to run. They say, you run, you ask questions later. Right? Amen. Amen. So, one of the first action, one of the first reaction that people do in the difficult inflation time is to run. We want to move to Florida. We want to move to California. Praise the Lord. But you know that, amen, to run away amen. from from places, but you want to make sure that your move is prompted by God, not because of economic circumstances or because of jobs. Amen. Praise the Lord. That, hallelujah, you're not sure where you're going. Now, look, hear this story. When Abraham time, what happened? Abraham and Lot were two individuals, two nations, two Man. separate people. Now, the Lord had blessed them and they had prospered. Now, then, the servants began to quarrel over who should grain their... Remember, they were shepherds. They have sheep and oxen and all that's what they do for a living. They were nomads. Now, Abraham's servants and Lot's servants, they were related. Abraham was Lot's nephew. Now, they began to quarrel. And Abraham, being somebody who trusts God, told his nephew to choose which part of the land he wants to live. Stretch forth your eye and look which part do you want to live. Abraham looked towards Sodom. And he moved to... Um, I mean, Lot. He moved over there. But Abraham trusted God. Amen. Amen. So, we have to learn to trust God. If God is telling you, prompting you to move to another city, sure, you move. But it shouldn't be just because. Amen. You feel a lot of pressed financially and you want to relocate. I have seen many people sad when I read over the news, it's over the national, international news, how many brothers and sisters from third world countries we're taking gruesome travels through the Mediterranean seas. Hallelujah. After going through sub-Saharan travels, sub-Sahara desert, they made it to Italy. From Italy, they found their way to Europe. And they don't even know what is waiting for them over there. We've had so many sad stories. How many never even made it through the desert? Amen? We saw the televisions how in the modern times, human beings were being sold even in the modern times until there was an outrage international outrage and condemnation desperate to get to europe not knowing what's waiting for them there mm. praise the lord Amen. before Amen. you move you have to first check if it's the will of god number number what number three amen hallelujah, hallelujah. number three this is the time yeah, yeah. also in hard times you have to like i told the story of the sister what about the skills God has given you? Praise the Lord. Untapped skills. How much is it to 
have a haircut now in our own city. Hallelujah. To get a haircut is more than an average haircut now, Baba, is $30. That's more than minimum wage. And, and that's a skill many people do not want to have. So imagine you have to call 10 people a day times three without teeth. How much will you make if you're making minimum wage in a store? Compare that. Just an average of 10 persons you caught a day. How much is it? And think about that. What about the electricians? Those jobs that people don't want to do. Some people don't want to do electrician, plumbers. What is the minimum wage for a plumber? Electrician. Skill jobs are more marketable, even in hard times. Amen. Just to fix a key on your door. How much is it? Just to put a lock on your door. Hallelujah. Amen. How much is it? The labor is more than the cost of buying the key. Hallelujah. These are just simple facts. Amen. Bible says what? Deuteronomy 8.18. Remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that gives you wisdom. Yes. To make wealth. Hallelujah. A few days ago I was talking with pastor. I said there's a difference between intelligence and wisdom. A person might have PhD in aeronautic engineering. A person might have PhD in aeronautic science, electrical engineering. A person might have doctorate degree in any field. A person might be a pastor. But you still need wisdom to apply your knowledge. Amen? Amen. You still need wisdom. There are many people that have knowledge but do not have wisdom. I have seen PhD people who are struggling to pay their rent. I've seen people with master's degree. Hallelujah. Two double master's degrees don't have a job. They're struggling. People with double degrees, they don't have, they, they can't settle. Or every time you hear from them, they got fired. They can't keep a job because they have no wisdom. In, in, in hard times like this, praise the Lord. You, in times when economic uncertainty, praise the Lord, you see people with accounting degrees, MBAs, yeah. but they, they, they always constantly losing jobs. They can't stay in a job. Why? Because they have no wisdom on how to apply skills necessary to sustain themselves. And then you also hear people who really have jobs, but when the time, economic hard time, inflation time comes, they start cutting. They begin to cut, they cut, they become affected by it. But there are those who have this wisdom that I talk about, that they know how to balance themselves and own, hold themselves well in corporate industry. That even when there is a cut, amen, even when there is a cut in staff, it does not affect them. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number four, live within your means. You have to learn. Oh, I'm talking about acquiring new skills. That's what I was talking about, This, uh, the, 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 the retaining yourself in a place. If they're giving you skills and knowledge, trainings. I remember when I was in my job, I had, my wife just had a, my daughter was, our daughter was born. Yet they put up that training at 7 o'clock in the morning. Super, for supervisors and directors and people above, you know, decision-making position. It's a leadership training, six months. The, the meeting starts, the training starts at 7. Finish is one hour. Finish at 8. But I have to travel 45 minutes to get there. My wife just had a baby. She needed support. I have to leave home at 6 in the morning. That means I have to wake up at 5 to get there. Then when I finish there, then I move to my office because my office is about one hour travel from where the meeting was. So then I'm in the, morning, in the training at 5.30 in the morning headed to there because yeah, it doesn't mean that I'm going to the training. I have to show up at 7 at the door. You never know what will happen on the way. So I have to give myself 30 minute intervals to get there, which means I have to wake up at 5 o'clock every day. And there was another guy who also needed, wanted to take the training, my colleague at work. And he said, oh, his wife also had a baby. But he said he cannot make it that early. The, our senior supervisor, one of the CFO says, ask Justin how he makes it. Now, I'm not tweaking my horns. <laughs> but what I know is that I need the training. Mm -hmm. And I also want to solidify my position. God forbid. If they happen to decide they want to bring their ass, and you know what I mean by that, scissors, let somebody else pick up the word differently. When they bring a scissors now, say they're cutting down staff members 
Amen. Hallelujah. By resume, by qualification, I have my qualification. By training, I also went for the training. By experience, I have also experienced. So you have to solidify yourself. So that's what it means in economic inflation time. You have to, amen, dust out your resume, brush out your resume, amen. Those skills that you have, you have to put it out there. Amen. The world is dynamic. You don't know who next you're speaking in a taxi. The next person you're sitting right there might be somebody who will be your next employer. Just me talking about your job. Oh, you're so frustrated. You're talking to so much person. Say, listen, do you have your resume right now? We are at work. We need somebody like you. Marketing exec. And that's what you qualify. Where you are, you are just managing. You're just hanging in there. Now you met this guy in the bus, in the train, who is a marketing exec who just came to town. Give me your resume. And you start formulating because you don't have it. When you're supposed to market yourself, package yourself, Readjust. Sounds, this sounds like a job training program. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. the Lord. But that is what it is. It's an economic issue. When something that has to do with hard times comes, we have to talk about adjustment. Amen. Right? Amen. So that's number three. Number four, live within your means. This is not a time to acquire debts. This is not a time to begin to borrow. If you have family members that have means or friends that have means to help you, do not be too proud to ask for help. You know, some of the problem people have is pride. They don't want to ask. They don't want people to know their business. They don't want people to know you are struggling. But you have to humble yourself. The Bible says, they people that humble themselves are lifted up those that what? That lift themselves. Those that are lifted up will be what? Will be abased. Amen? Amen? And in the midst of living in your midst, avoid comparing yourself with others. As Christians, don't come to, because that brings jealousy. What I call roving eyes. Amen? Avoid comparing yourself with others. Avoid using other people to make comparison. Work within what God has provided for you. If your job is cleaner, be the best cleaner. If your job says you are a teacher, be the best teacher. If the job says you are a social worker, be the best social worker. If you are a nurse, be the best nurse. That Amen. You Earn your place among your career so that when you leave, you leave a legacy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Impress the world with what God has given you. Amen. Impress the world with the talent God has put in your Amen. life. Amen. You cannot be somebody who is, hallelujah, barely could, hallelujah, survive at your job, but you are living like the, you want to live like the Kardashians. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at what the Bible says here. He that loveth pleasure shall be what? A poor man. He that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. Proverbs 21, 17. You hear what the Bible says? He that loveth pleasure. That's people who don't live within their means. Today, you know, the industry, the fashion industry is telling us we are plumpy. You need to cut on your weight. You're overweight here. You need to look like this. You need to look like that, right? They accept of your hair color should be this color. You need to sound like this, sound like that. And you are spending money buying all these things. You know, and accumulating more debts. Hallelujah. Amen. Whoever go, he said, whoever gathers money little by little, make it grow. Proverbs 13, 11. Whoever makes what? He says, whoever gathers money little by little, makes it grow. As the pastor of heart counsel people who are making, you know, what we call the high income earners. People make over 150,000, 200,000 and above. I've had opportunity to cancel some of these people. And they say they don't know where their money is going. They make the money, but they can't give account where the money is going into. But I've seen people who make $20 an hour. And they have savings. And they're actually comfortable. Amen? Praise the Lord. So live within your means. Amen? Amen. Prepare Amen. your work outside. Amen. Get everything ready for yourself in the field and after that build your house. That's what the Bible said. It says prepare your work outside. Get everything ready for yourself in the field and after that build your house. Lay up a solid foundation by building what? By what? Living within your means. The Bible says in Proverbs 28 and uh, not Proverbs Jeremiah 28 verse 1 God listed out the things we should do so that you will be above, not beneath, the head and not the tail, right? Amen. 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 Everything in your house will be blessed. You see, the kind of blessing is not the kind of blessings of God. is the one that adds no sorrow. It's the one that trickles. You know what I mean, trickles? We have blessings that flow from the top to the bottom, back from the bottom to the top. 
Those are what I call wealth. What I call riches. Generational wealth. Amen. The one that trickled to the next generation. Amen. Right? Right? Praise the Lord. Amen. Right? Fourth to the fifth to the sixth generation are wealthy. So we don't we're not talking about wealth that is only strictly for one person alone. That's you right. said, Oh, your cousin is wealthy. Your you are bragging that your in your cousin is a multi-millionaire, but you are living below poverty level. That don't make sense. Exactly. Amen. Hallelujah. So you don't brag for somebody's account. You brag or you speak about what you know, right? You say, Oh, you have a brother who is a multi-millionaire, billionaire, but you are living below poverty level. It does there might be no balance. So live within your means. You can't fake it to make it in this time we live now. If you don't have, you don't have. Number five. Amen? Number five is the final point we're going to make right here. And mind you, all of these things I'm saying is supported by the scriptures. Amen. And it's also Amen. a way of humbling yourself. Live within, living within your means is godly. Amen? Amen. It's godly. Amen. You don't go buy shoes and clothes that you know you cannot afford because you want to present yourself. Amen. Impress somebody else. Hallelujah. You spend and you live within your means. Contentment is next to godliness. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You live healthy. Not worried that your debtors are going to come and stressing you out because you live within your means. You don't put God to test by saying that when you get there, you will cross. When you get to the bridge, you will cross the bridge because you have so much debts. Because that again will impact you economically. It will frustrate you. It will also hinder you from contributing meaningfully to the things of God. And they've been able, unable to lift somebody up who is in need. You know, we have to place ourselves, you have to place your place self in a place where you'll be able to, God will be able to use you, your gift, your talent, your blessing to leverage his kingdom plan. Amen. If God has sent you to a city, remember the bar parable about the what? Jesus talked about the parable of a good neighbor. The priest came and walked by. The preacher came and walked by. People came. These were supposed to be the righteous people. Who were the person who had the man? He was a rich man. He was a rich fellow, right? So our wealth, whatever God has given to us, should be in a disposition, predisposition, where we can use it to leverage God's kingdom plan on earth. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the secret Amen. of prospering in the hard times. It's when God has... You have opened your house, your resources to use it. Hallelujah. By faith. Amen. Amen. To open door Amen. for somebody else. Amen. Amen. Remember the parable Jesus said, the certain man built up his wealth and his food and everything. And then that night, the Bible says, God says, you're coming home. All of the things he had built, he left it behind. The jewelry and the cars, you're not going anywhere with it. It's only meant to make your life comfortable and more enjoyable on earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But, so that takes us to the next point. Share your blessings. Shine your faith through sharing your blessings. Amen. 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 Share your blessings with others and support the work of the gospel. Amen. Amen. This is a sine qua non for prosperity. Sine qua non, we call it. I haven't used that word in a long time. Right? 